Hi, and welcome to this video on multi-sampler. Multi-sampler is an included instrument with waveform, and it's a general purpose sampler instrument. It's simple, and it's easy to learn, but it does have a pretty deep feature set. Using multi-sampler, you can use your own samples. You can drag in sounds from the browser or from your file system, or even audio clips. You can drag right into multi-sampler and then trigger them from MIDI notes on your keyboard or from MIDI clips within your track. You can map sounds to the keyboard or you can even record directly into multi-sampler. It also has slices and beat detection features to allow you to chop up existing beats and remap them to the keyboard to play them back in creative ways. And then each sound layer allows you to do trimming, looping, pitch, panning. You can reverse, you can add filters, there's a comprehensive set of envelopes and LFOs, and you can also do one-shot triggering or trigger different samples based on velocity. Multi-sampler also supports sound font files by simply drag and drop. There's also a cool scratch pad feature over on the right that allows you to collect files that you need to edit, slice them up, or just keep them on hand to use later. In addition, multi-sampler supports MPE, which gives you the ability to apply per note expression, especially when you're using Roly Seaboard controllers or other controllers that support that. Multi-sampler is also multi-output, which you can set up here, and that allows you to play each sound layer to a separate output. And this is useful if you're setting up a drum instrument and you want something like your kick or your snare to go out to different tracks for mixing. In the rest of this video, I'm just going to walk through and identify the parts of the user interface so you have a, kind of the idea of the layout of multi-sampler. And we'll go into detail on how all these things work in the coming videos. First, over on the left is the sound layer list. This is where you organize the samples that you're going to use to build your instrument. You get them in there by just dragging them. So I've got the waveform browser open. If I choose a sample, I can drag it, preferably drag it from this file icon. You can drag it and just drop it in, and that becomes a new sound layer. Once you've got a sound layer selected in the sound layer list, then all the controls like pitch, velocity, things like reversing, setting the root note, setting up filters, LFOs, the envelopes are all available down here. If some of these things you can also do graphically. The root note is set right here, and you can also trim the waveform using these handles right here. As soon as you drag it in, you have that ability. If you want to do this with a different sample, just click on a different sample, and you've got all these same controls for each sample. There's also right-click functionality on the samples, so you can remove, rename, duplicate samples, or set quick zones to quickly map them to common drum sounds. Now there's a few icons just above the sound layer list. This allows you to add a blank sound layer. Click this to remove. It's exactly the same thing as right clicking and removing. And this sweep will clear the entire setup. It does give you a warning. If you click OK, then it basically clears the whole setup so you can start over. So I'll take one of these samples and put it back in here. Now Multi-sampler is organized into three key pages and then the two panes on the left and right. On the left, we've got the sound layer list. In the middle, we've got the controls for working within the page. And then over on the right, we have the scratch pad area. The scratch pad area is just a list of samples. You can just drag anything you want in here and just have them ready to use. At any point, you can drag them over and make them active sound layers like this or you can edit them within the record page, which I'll show you later. But it is a way to kind of stage things that you want to chop up or just to have on hand that you're not quite ready to put into your setup yet. So the sounds page is where you do most of your sound design work. The zones page is the page where you map the sounds to the keyboard. I'm gonna take this sound out and then select this one. And you'll see that this selects the range over which the MIDI notes are playable from your keyboard. So if I play a note on my MIDI keyboard, 
like C4. That is a single piano sample that is now mapped over the keyboard. This sets the root note, in which case it's set to C4. It's actually a C3 note, but we'll set that later. If you wanted to change that, there is a range of controls up here. This is the low range of your, of your mapping. You can adjust that graphically, or you can click here to set that. This is the high range of the mapping, which you can also adjust graphically. This is the root note, which you can scroll up and down through here, or you can just come in here and type it in. C3 is our correct root note. This is also the velocity range. You can set the velocity range by saying this sample is valid for velocities up to 95, or you can say it's, in this case, this sample will trigger for velocities on these notes between 102 and 107. Those are the velocity, the MIDI velocity values. You can also drag samples directly to the zones page if you like. As you drag them in, if you move up and down like this, you're setting the range of the zone. If you hold shift, left and right sets the kind of the window of velocities as well. So using that, you can drag things in and immediately start to map them. Each of these boxes, which you'll see select the appropriate sound layer, has a right click menu that's very similar to what you'll find in the sound layer list. Moving on to the record page, the record page allows you to do some basic editing in the things that are set in the scratch pad area. Now the scratch pad area itself can be open and closed using this icon. And then if you click on the scratch pad, this edit pencil, then you'll see it loads it in here and we can do the basic trimming right there. You can also play once you've done the trimming. Now there are additional controls that are quite interesting here. Using this area down here, we can actually set up to record from the sampler output, from the system input. That would be like the built-in microphones or whatever is set to the system input in Windows or your Mac operating system, or the system output, which allows you to basically sample from anything playing back on your system in other programs. Say you're playing a YouTube video and you wanted to capture something off of there, you can do that. Just click system output here and then click record right here and you'll start recording. And then you can click stop and then capture a little sample off of pretty much anything within your computer. Now I'm gonna load a drum beat into the scratch pad area and click the pencil. For drum beats, there is beat detection. And if you click this crop icon and do automatically create slices on beats, you'll see that it detects the transients on your beats. Now, any of these you can use by right clicking. You can save to the scratch pad, you can play it, or you can create a new sound layer from any of these hits. So say we take this. So we'll go to this beat right here and play it. You can hear that's a nice snare sound. Then all we need to do is right click that and create a new sound layer. We can give it a name like snare. And now that is mapped in. I can trim it up a little bit. And now I have a playable snare. And just as a little trick here, if I right click on this quick zone and set it to snare, it will actually map it to the typical note for snare back on the record page. Now there's also a way to create a sound layer from each slice in here, and those can also be mapped to a series of stepped MIDI notes, which you can create. And I'll show you that in another video. In addition to the three pages, we do have the ability to size and resize by dragging the corner of multi-sampler. At the top, we have undo and redo, as well as preset management. If you click here, you can save a preset, set up a default preset, and then to complete this, we've got some metering up here for the output and then an overall output volume control. And that's a quick walkthrough of the user interface for multi-sampler. We will break down a lot of these features in coming videos. 
Stay tuned if you want to dig into all of the details. Thanks for watching.